Hey everybody! Hey. Welcome to Hashtag Pastor Besties. I'm Nicole. I'm Melissa. And today we are talking about calls. Not just phone calls, but calls into ministry. Yes, yeah, somebody asked us to share about our calls into ministry. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, hey, let's make a whole episode about calls. The call. So, enjoy. So, um, we want to talk about calls. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the important parts to realize is that, you know, maybe you're not called to be a pastor. That's okay. Yeah. But you are still called. Absolutely. Like, everybody is called. So, it may not be to ordain ministry, but you are called to ministry. Yes. And that's, I mean, that's what happens in the waters of our baptism is we're called into ministry. We all have something that we're called to. It may be called to be a teacher or a police officer or um, something else, but we're all called to something. Yes, we are. And it's so important that we answer that call. So I'll share about my call yeah. story. Um, when I was a junior in high school, I wanted to be, I think at the time, a psychiatrist mm -hmm. because I wanted to help people and um, I had a good friend that we had known each other since kindergarten come up to me um, his name is Jared hey Jared and he said Nicole you won't believe what happened to me and I was like what and he said I have been called into ministry I am going to be a pastor mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so great. I knew he would be a great pastor. And um, we had done some kind of leadership stuff at our school for uh, Jesus, Jesus-y stuff. And so I was like, that's great. That's amazing. And as I was walking away from that conversation, I heard God say, in the like just within me, Nicole, that's what I want you to do. Mm. And I was like, oh, mm. no thanks. I don't really do the public speaking thing. That's not how I roll. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of left it at that. And I just kept hearing God say, Nicole, I want you to do that. I want you to do that. And so for maybe a month, I just kind of toiled with it. And um, I remember one night I was at, in my bedroom. I was laying down in bed and I finally said, okay. If this is what you want me to do, God, I'll do it. But I'm not going to. I was like, I'm not going to do it on my own. So you better see me through. And that was kind of the start of it. And everything just sort of fell into place. And the funny thing about Jared Chestnut is that he didn't become a pastor. Mm. And so I always thought that was so strange. But then, like, just recently, like, within the past few years, went back into ministry. Huh. It was so, I, I just love that. It's so kind of cool that God used him in my life mm -hmm. and, you know, called him as well. So it was, it was just kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Melissa? What was your call? So, um, you know, when I think about my call, I think it goes to, um, I, there's a whole lot of prehistory, aren't they? Um, oh, yes. But um, when I was a senior in high school, um, I hadn't been attending church regularly um, for a lot of reasons, uh, but I never lost my faith. I just didn't attend a worship service or a church regularly. And I went um, to my church randomly on a Wednesday during Lent, and I hadn't met the new pastor yet. So it had been a while. Um, and when I was in line, he turned around and um, I didn't know who he was. And he looked at me and he goes, you're going on the mission trip with us this summer. And I was like, hmm. No, I think you might have me confused, like, with my sister or with somebody else. No, I'm not going on the mission trip with you this summer. He goes, no, you're going on the mission trip with us this summer. And I was like, no, I'm not going on the mission trip with you this summer. And he's like, no, you're going on the mission trip with us this summer. And I was like, look, I don't know you. You don't know me. Nobody tells me what to do except for my parents. So, no, I'm not going on the mission trip with you this summer. And he was like, oh, maybe I should introduce myself. Hi, I'm Travis. And I was like, oh, I'm still not going on the mission trip with you this summer. <laughs> so I went on the mission trip that summer. Oh, weird. Shocker. Um, so I went on the mission trip that summer, and that was where I heard my call. It was at communion after the mission trip um, at the altar uh, here. I heard God say, I have called you to do my work. Go and go and do that, and I will be with you always. And I was like, that great. Makes me weepy. Yeah, okay. me too. Um, and... I was like, okay, but I have a plan. 
my plan is to double major in music and education, so I will do your work that way. I have decided that this is the right way. <laughs> I love it when we try to dictate to God what uh, God yeah. is going to do in our lives. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it went real well. Um, so um, <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I started college and uh, double majoring music education, but hated music theory which is kind of a problem if you want to it's be a music major. Sort of Like important. it was, I hated it so much. And I found that the place that I was really filled with joy and that I just felt, we just felt right, was helping with the youth group on Sunday nights. And um, so I went back to Travis, my pastor at the time, and I was like, I think that, uh, I think I'm called in to be a youth pastor or a youth director. And he was like, that's great. You're going to go to seminary. You're going to be ordained. You're going to be a pastor. You're going to preach. And I was like, whoa. I said youth director. I didn't say all of that. So there's that. And he was like, okay, well, why don't you come to me when you're ready? And I was like, I did. So we're, we're good. Um, and then it was a couple weeks later that I was like, I don't remember who was preaching in the worship service. I don't remember what was happening. I don't remember anything about the sermon or the service. All I remember was sitting there and watching and participating in worship and hearing God say, that is what I've called you to. And I was Busted. like, Busted. Oh, man. I'll do it. It sounded so willing, like, yeah, fine, God. I'll do whatever you want me to do. But, yeah. So, here I am. Here we are. Here we here are. Here we are. Pastoring. And I love oh. it so much. Me too. I mean, have you ever thought, like, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't pastoring, but I just feel like I wouldn't, I don't know, yeah. so much of who I am is, is a fulfilled pastor. by being a pastor. Yeah. I love being a pastor. It's yeah. like the best job I for me. It. I get it's not the best job for everybody, right. but for me, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I think that um, when I think about my call, like there's been an evolution of my call. I mean, again, I felt like my first initial call was to youth ministry. Right. Yeah, and me too. Me too, right. actually. And I still feel called to youth ministry or to help younger generations. I, I really do. But I don't feel called in the same way that I initially felt called. And I really understand my call currently um, to be to question people's assumptions. Like, what is a pastor? Um, what oh my is gosh, it? you're so good at that. I mean, it's my call. So I kind of you you know, kind of do are. it. Um, so it's, um, so I've understood that my call has evolved. And so I think that everyone's call, there's an evolution of call and the, your call is fluid. Like yeah. it's not going, it's not going no, to be the same it, thing. It can't, and it can't be. No. If you stop trying to figure out where God has called you, if you're like, Oh, I'm ordained, I'm serving as a pastor. I'm done discerning. Mm -hmm. That's when you're going to find yourself in a place that you really don't want to be because God is constantly calling you every day. Yeah. He calls you every day. So Every day you have to answer the call. Every mm -hmm. day you have to say, yes, God, I'm going to do what you asked me to do, whether mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea or not. Mm -hmm. And it's just an everyday call. Right. And not just for us, for everybody. I mean, yeah. you yes. have to answer the call every day. He is calling you every day. If right. you're not listening, then that, you know, if you're not hearing, it's probably because you're not listening is what I mean to say. And you just have to listen every mm -hmm. day to see what God is asking you to do that day. Yeah. Um, I think that there's times too when it feels like your calling doesn't necessarily match up with like your vocation or yeah. what you do. Um, I know I have a friend of mine who he feels called to a particular thing um, and that's not what his job is. His job is not fulfilling in that way. Um, and so I think that sometimes your call is different than your vocation. Yes. And I think that's okay. Yeah, sometimes absolutely. Sometimes you just have to have a job that's putting food on the table. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you're not still in ministry and that you can't still be doing God's work right. where you are. Right, right, right. Yeah, and sometimes you're not in the, in the place that it feels like your call is. And sometimes that means a discernment of a new call. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it means that... Well, I mean, you've had this experience. Yeah, yeah. So before I was appointed to my to the church I'm at now, I really felt called into um, college ministry. I was working with college students at my last church for part of what I was doing, but I really felt like every I that was what I should be doing yeah. all the time. Well, that's not what my new appointment looked like. And so then I was kind of in a spot of, well, what, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. 
So it took a lot of discernment, a lot of prayer to, to ask God, like, well, what are my gifts? How can I use my gifts here? And I feel like he's answered that 100% and he has shown me, you know, how to use my gifts and graces where I'm at. It means starting new things, mm -hmm. which is exciting, um, things that give me energy and fill me. And I think I'm, you know, using my gifts as best I can, but it doesn't always look like what you think. Right. And sometimes, depending on where you are, God is going to pull out different things in you to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, I think that that's the fluidity of your call, and that's the evolution of how you're called. Um, one of my favorite quotes from Fred Frederick Beekner is, um, your vocation is where your deep gladness and the world's deep need meet. And I think when those mm. two things collide together, like that's magic. Yeah. Um, and that's your call. Like that, what you're passionate about, if you're passionate about something, there's a reason why. Yes. So, I mean, when you think about like, what is my call? Because that's a question that a lot of people ask. Like, and it's asked in different ways. Like, what's my purpose? Um, what should I be doing with my what, life? What am I going to do with the rest of my life? Like, we ask it at different times, too. We ask it of high school students. So, what's next? Yeah, um, what are you going to do students. with the rest of your life? Yeah, well, college students, like, what are you going to do now? Um, when you retire, that's another time that the question gets asked. Like, what's my purpose now that, like, it's not my job? Or right. um, when those things that happen in life that that are interruptions and disruptions, like, what? so what am I supposed to be doing? What's my purpose? I think one of the important things that I heard along the way somewhere was you have to bloom where you're planted. Mm. So no matter where you are, God is going to use you if you let him. If you listen and if you allow him to guide you, you're going to bloom where you are. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do great work for God where you are, whether you're a pastor, whether, mm -hmm. you know, you're working as an administrative assistant somewhere. Like, it doesn't matter. God is going to use you where you are Absolutely. if you allow him to. Absolutely. So one of my other favorite quotes is from Howard Thurman. And he says this about call. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs, what the world needs is people who have come alive. I love that. It's so good and it's so true. Like make how do you come alive? What excites you? What are you passionate about? Because again, that's probably your call. There's a reason why this is something you're passionate about. Are you passionate about children? Like maybe you're called to be a teacher. Maybe you're called to teach Sunday school. Yeah. Maybe you're, are you passionate about political stuff? Maybe you're called to be a politician. Like people are called to different yes. things. So find what it is that you're passionate about and, and come alive with that because that's what the world needs. Do, do the thing. Yeah, do the thing. Whatever it is, just do it. Do, do the it. thing. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. So may you... May you listen to that voice. Um, may you listen to what makes you come alive and the still small voice that claimed you as God's child because you are a beloved child of God. So may you listen to that voice that has claimed you as a child of God and go and do the thing. Go do that what you have been called to and God will be with you always. He totally will. Amen. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.